Here we are once again back in the Socialist Republic of Canada and we're going to do a rest spray video for you and hopefully answer every question and concern and all of that cool stuff. So stay tuned here and we'll get to it. Now this is the product that I use. It's phosphoric acid. It is 60% concentrate, which means that 40% of it is water. Um, it's made by Delaval and it's called Delabrite. So that's the product I use. I buy it locally from a farm supply store. And if you search it on the internet, you will find suppliers for it. That's how I found it. So I mix this product, which I already have it mixed here in a bottle. I mix this product with 70% concentrate ethyl alcohol. And what I do is I take approximately 95% of this product and 5% of the ethyl alcohol and mix it together so it's about it's about 19 parts to one i don't mix it exact i just throw it together just guesstimate and away i go it doesn't have to be precise as you see i have the dog here and the dog will be leaving the vicinity when we do the the rust spray so don't worry the dog will no be not be anywhere near the work that we're doing here this we're going to work on today this is an inner fender for one of these cars and this car this piece has been sandblasted previously and then left out in the weather so it's been in the snow and the rain and everything for a couple years mistakenly and I'm going to show you how to clean it up and make it usable without having to do a whole lot of work by sanding and grinding and all of that stuff I'm going to give you a simple easy way to clean the rust on this piece now the dog is not around the dog is out on the highway playing so she's far away from this product and she will not get near the product so of course you need to use protection with this product and uh, you know it's, it could be very dangerous if you inhale it or if you drink it so we're gonna make sure we have protection on and uh, I'll show you that in a second I'm gonna get my gear on and then we will get started so I've got all my protective gear on I'm ready to spray we've got a fire extinguisher just in case and we are good to go. We're going to apply a liberal amount of this to the piece. Spray it on. That should be enough right there. And we're done. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment on this video, as well as watch our other videos for much more car content and tips and tricks. We do have a one time donation program on our channel or you can also join as a member and get lots of added perks with your support we can make many more videos to come now we're going to spray the other side of the piece Over the years, I've tried many different methods for rust removal. Some of them work well and others do not work as efficiently. This is the method that I use as an alternative to media blasting, which would be my other choice for removing rust on cars. This method is the easiest way I've found with minimal effort of work and the best results. It is a chemical reaction that turns iron oxide into iron phosphate. In order for rust to live, it requires oxygen. So when it's been converted like this and then painted properly with the right products, then it will not rust through again because the rust is fundamentally dead. In my opinion, this method is not harmful to myself or the environment as long as proper precautions are taken. Phosphoric acid is used directly in the food industry, including many soft drinks that contain it. Farmers use it as part of their agriculture for plants, and it's also used in swimming pools. Obviously, I over-exaggerated the protective gear to the due to the comments on the previous videos from viewers, but I do recommend eye protection, gloves, and wear a mask, or use it in a well-ventilated area, making sure not to be inhaling the droplets that you are spraying. You can buy phosphoric acid from home improvement stores. It's labeled as Concrete Etch, Milkstone Remover from a farm supply store, and even some commercial cleaning supply stores have it as a cleaning product. 
A lot of viewers ask me if you can substitute the phosphoric acid for hydrochloric acid, muriatic acid, battery acid, etc. You can if you want to, but you're not going to get the same results and potentially damage the metal or yourself. You can substitute the jam in a peanut butter and jam sandwich with mayonnaise, but it's not going to taste the same, so just stick to the recipe. You also need to use ethyl alcohol for the best results. It's not that difficult to find. Practically every pharmacy has it. I have substituted the ethyl alcohol for hand sanitizer in one of my past videos. It works satisfactory, but it's not my recommendation. Viewers ask me if I use hand sanitizer to make it into a gel. The answer is absolutely not. You do not want this product staying on the surface. For best results, you want it to, to dry off the metal and if it's pooling, then you need to use a blowgun or change the angle the piece is sitting so that the excess can run off with gravity. I've used this formula on whole cars before, even the underbody of the car. I don't purposely spray it directly on parts that aren't rusty metal, but I've had no side effects from it. Everyone's results may vary, but I've had no problem in the past. If you get this on paint that you don't want damaged, Rinse it off immediately with plenty of water to neutralize it, because if left on the paint, it will dye the paint and change its color. You don't have to neutralize this formula. All you have to do is wait 24 hours, and then you can coat it with the product of your choice. I recommend a good quality epoxy primer, then top coat it with whatever paint you prefer, and it will last for years to come. If done properly with the right products, there will be no need to redo this procedure ever again. Try to keep whatever you're working on away from the rain and even humid weather can cause a lot of white chalky residue. If it does happen to you, then just start over by coating it again. Somebody asked me to show the effects on concrete, so here it is. It will etch the concrete and actually make the concrete ready to paint. But if you already have a finished surface, you do not want to get it on the concrete because it will lift your finish and ruin it. So after 10 minutes or so, this is what the product looks like. Obviously, I missed a couple spots, so I will just respray those areas and let it sit some more. So it's been an hour now, and as you can see, the rust is all neutralized. And now we're just waiting the 24 hours for it to completely evaporate and dry before we can go on to the next step. Here's a rusty crusty wheel that we'll do as well. I'm not going to clean this all up and make it all pretty because I'm not using it anyway. I just want to show the effects of the spray. So, as you've seen before, I just sprayed it on, and I'm just going to leave it. So I have, wait, so I have my assistant here, <laughs> and she looks ridiculous, but that's okay, because it's funny. And she's going to spray this piece right here, and make it beautiful. That should be good. Good job. So in this situation, I'm going to brush it on rather than spray it on because I don't want to wreck any of the paint in the surrounding area. If I spray it, it's kind of random and it doesn't, uh, it's hard to contain in one specific area. So I'm just going to brush it on with a paint brush. And as you can see, I'm already getting a reaction out of it. Now this is not the way to fix a car, this is not the way to do body work, I'm literally just doing this for demonstration purposes. Most people would take a grinder to this and take off all the flakiness and all the flake paint and everything and then, and then treat it and then continue on with your body work, epoxy, paint, all of that stuff.
but putting this on here will neutralize it for a little while it'll probably last a couple months in summer weather even in rain and stuff um, before it starts rusting again so if you're trying to preserve your vehicle you could put this on regularly to keep it from rotting more and ending up with holes this piece is somewhat savable right here it's in pretty bad condition so I would recommend replacing the metal in this section rather than doing what I'm doing here this is just my friend's van and I thought I would do it to demonstrate what the results are so I guess it's been a couple days since I've sprayed this and as you can see it looks very decent very clean it's rust free now there's a slight bit of white residue that you see on here and that's nothing to worry about that's uh, pretty typical from when this happens especially if you're in a humid environment it can happen but it's okay you can spray right over top of that and it won't affect your paint job at all And here's the rim that we did and as you can see I've missed a couple spots here so you'd want to respray this anyway I left it out in the rain on purpose to show you what happens when it gets wet the uh, white chalky residue is a result of that um, but if this rim is clean of course not covered in grass and once it's treated it won't be an issue anyway and if you respray it the white residue will disappear as long as you keep it out of the rain and the humidity after that. I hope you like this video and look at my other videos because there are many other rust videos on my channel as well as lots of how to's to do other stuff with classic cars and much much more. So please subscribe, watch, like, all that stuff and we'll see you again next time. Get out there and work on your own car now.